You don't want to eat steamed broccoli with baijiu, you know? In Dongbei, you guys call each other lao tie. When the relationship is so solid, it's as hard as iron. Oh. Dude. Welcome to another episode of The World and Why, where we explore culture through food and we show you how to domestically travel during these times. Today, we are exploring food and culture from the region of China called Dongbei, which is the Northeast. Of course, we're exploring Dongbei right now via Flushing, Queens. We could not do it without an authentic Dongbei guide and former college basketball player, Tony Bai. With six minutes left in this opening half. Long three, and it's good by Tony Bai. Oh, okay, okay. Hey guys, my name is Tony. I was born in Shenyang, Liaoning. Not a lot of people know about Dongbei food and culture, so today I'm gonna show you guys what's good. We have three different types of Dongbei food that we're gonna show you today. We got this dinner sit down, we have the street barbecue style, and then we got the Dongbei dumplings. I'm very excited, so first of all, let's go eat. And by the way, guys, we're getting around Flushing Queens on our U-Scooters GT 2020. If you guys want $60 off on your purchase, check out our code FUNGBROS on uscooters.com. Let's go. Okay, our first spot is a modern family sit-down spot called Private Kitchen. The Chinese name is Xiao Dongbei, which means Little Northeast. This is a Dongbei-owned spot, so I'm excited, man. Just like the food I ate growing up. Flushing feels so much sort of like a outer suburb of Shanghai right now. They've got the battery pack rental system. Now you can rent a battery pack with your WeChat and just use it whenever. And I've only seen it in China and right. here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, only in China and flush it. What should we get if we want to get the most authentic Dongbei dishes? Yeah, we gotta get that. Yeah. Get that. Oh, this is crazy. Wow. Oh, this dish is fire. Oh, we gotta get that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we gotta get the oh, yes. roll. Oh, this is oh, so classic. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, he says he likes it all. Spoken like a real chef, man. He knows what's good because he makes it all. So of course it's all good. Actually. Dongbei is actually not one single province. It's actually just a region which encompasses three provinces. Tony, what are the three provinces in Dongbei? So there are Heilongjiang, Jilin, and Liaoning. It's like a brotherhood up there. Tony, why are you the only one with a beer, bro? How did that get here? How did they know to give you the beer? I know you invited us out to drink a couple of times. I'm not gonna lie. I was a little scared. I didn't take you up on it. <laughs> That's where we met on a bar, remember? Yeah. That's true. Cheers. We are starting off on our Dongbei crawl through Flushing here at Private Kitchen. Tony, what are we looking at? Got the Guobaro here. This is really interesting. This is a Shenyang style. Authentic sweet and sour pork. Mmm, that crunch and the sweetness. I approve, I approve. It's almost mm. like a mochi-like coating. It's not like your regular batter, like buttermilk batter. It is absolutely more of a starchy mochi crust. So it's a little bit stretchy and a little bit chewy. Hey, you guys, we got a lot to eat, but I had to just go in and get another piece, man. Wow. Guobao Ro. Some people say it's the origin of what we know as today in America, sweet and sour corn. You know what's one of the interesting things about Dongbei food? And you know, you guys will see it more as we get into it. As I look at the jelly noodle, a lot of people compare Dongbei to America's Rust Belt. So the city that I'm from, especially, Shenyang, I know that it's heavily industrial, because almost all the cars are made there. The people there are just very blue collar and that's why they like to eat and drink and eat together and have feasts like this. All right guys, let's try the Wu Tai Lapi. It's really hard to describe because it's like a cold noodle with cucumbers and mustard. It's almost like an appetizer, but then people in, in Dongbei will eat this as like a main dish too. And what I love about this dish is the noodles itself feel like jelly, but it breaks down really easily in your mouth. It's actually not that stretchy, but it has that kind of flavor to it. So the next staple dish of Dongbei is this. It's called Di San Xian, which means triple delight, but Di means ground, so the vegetables that are grown there. It's peppers, potatoes, and eggplant. I don't know why, but every time I see this dish, it's glistening. Di San Xian, three delight plate. Mm. 
Yo, it is funny because it's considered the vegetable plate, but if you look at it, there's always this amount of oil on the bottom. All right. It's definitely so, not steamed, that's for sure. There's actually not that much steamed dishes in Dongbei culture. We drink a lot, right? So you kind of want the, the heavy flavor when you drink. You don't want to eat steamed broccoli with baijiu, you know? You don't want to eat steamed broccoli with baijiu, you know? So this one is paigu dunji dou, which is like a stewed string bean with, with short ribs and corn. Andrew, this is the most authentic version of this dish I've ever seen. This is the pork green bean stew. The vegetables are usually just incorporated with meat and heavy flavor. But, oh my god. Yeah. But they're in there. Yo, that is so good. All right, you guys, we had to take a quick break because the bas di gua, the molasses potatoes have arrived. So the molasses is still warm right now, meaning that it's gonna stretch, but so that you can actually grab and get a clean break you have to dip it in the cold water. This is why this dish has to be eaten right now. Molasses sweet potato. Basu di gua. All right. Ah, ah. Usually it's eaten as a dessert, but oh. we have to get to it or else it would have stuck together. Mm. Man, we I know we got more food to go, but man, this was exactly what I wanted to eat on a snowy day. This is the first day of snow this year in New York. So next we have the wuxiang jiang da gu, which is just like a soy sauce braised ribs. The meat is so tender, so flavorful. Big guys like us up north, we, we gotta eat meat, right? So right. to me, this looks amazing. Soy sauce pork rib. Jiang da gu. Mmm. Mmm. It's hot. That meat is just falling off. Could they make Dongbei food more presentable to like the Manhattan market? Do you think it's possible? I think it's possible, but it definitely needs a little marketing, you know? <laughs> like for example, our chunbing is literally just almost the same thing as a, a soft shell taco. If you market it as chunbing, people might not know what that is, but if you market it as a Chinese soft shell taco, that's definitely an easier way to try the food, right? Honestly, these are so good. Back in the day, I could probably eat 30 of these by myself. So I'm gonna grab plenty of scallions and pork right here. You can even put literally anything here. I'm gonna get some oh, string beans. Oh, oh, let me put a pepper oh. from the D-side oh, shit. Oh, maybe a wow. potato will be good. Yeah, yo, all right, we mix it everything. Yo, yo, check what I'm doing. I took the the pepper from the D-side shan. Okay, trend Oh my gosh. Bro, this is actually the perfect thing to have towards the end of the meal where you can kind of pick and choose any of the leftovers that are still here mm. and then you put them together. Essentially, small burrito wrap. Exactly. Wow. Mm. If you like Americanized Chinese food or even like semi-Americanized food like mushu pork, you will like Dongbei food. It totally is fitting within like things that you like. Salty, sweet, tasty. All right, last but not least, this is something I've never had before. You kind of had this growing up, right? Yeah, so the vegetable that's used, which is the cassia root jelly, is, is pretty native to the north. Hot and spicy cold noodles. It's like a cold spice. You don't eat a lot of dishes like this. There's only a few dishes, like even from Sichuan, that is like a cold, spicy dish. Yes. It's kind of like two familiar flavors, but I never had those juxtaposed with each other. These little konjac jelly knots are one of my favorite things to eat during hot pot. What was your guys' favorite thing that you guys got to double down on? I'm not gonna lie. This was one of my favorite Dongbei meals I've ever had. I got a roll with the Jingjiang Rou Si. The pancake that came with it and the ability to wrap everything, I never even thought of it that way, so man. What are you picking? <sighs> Come on, Gummer. The Wu Tai La Pi. Oh, wow. I'm actually going with the okay, Wu Tai okay, La Pi. Okay. All right, all right, Tony, you're the resident Shenyang guy here. What are you picking from this meal? Honestly, I'm gonna have to go with the Di San Xian because that's something that's a staple in Dongbei food. When I had this, it just brought back really good nostalgia and they cooked this dish very well here. Private Kitchen was hitting today. Yo, Yo honestly, I wanna clap it up for Private Kitchen, man. I'm gonna give it, honestly, straight up, a 4.5 out of 5. I see why not, man. 4.5 out of 5 is almost damn near perfect, man. Now we're gonna hit up like a more local spot, more of a drinking atmosphere and eating more of like, Papas and chores. All right, on to the drinking spot. Hey, how? You in where? Jilin Song Yan Ben Chao Xian Zhu. Oh, Chao Xian Zhu. Mu Yu is Han Guo Hua. Han Guo Hua. Yes. You think here the food is very popular? Yes. The first Dongbei World Food Festival. Welcome everyone to come to the public kitchen. The Chinese name is Xiao Dong. Welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. It's snowing out. We just ate Dongbei food. We got a Dongbei friend with us. How much more Dongbei could it get? We have just traveled one mile down Kaseta Boulevard. We're here at Holly Ave and we are outside of 
Liu Bu. It's a char spot, aka Shao Kao spot, aka barbecue spot. So basically, Shao Kao is really popular all around China, but for some reason, the Dongbei Shao Kao spots are the most popular. Maybe it's because of vibe, maybe it's because they're wild, maybe it's because they're crazy, maybe because they're a little bit lit or ratchet. I don't know, let's find out. Let's head into Liu Bu. First off, very minimally decorated. A classic Chinese on the wall feeling. Super authentic. They even have these little tables with the trapsies on the side. It's got a really nice home feeling. We've just found out that the, the owner here is from Shenyang and so is Tony. The owner is actually from my city, so I'm excited to see how the food is here. We've just found out that the owner is from Shenyang and so is Tony. The owner is actually from my city, so I'm excited to see how the food is here. It was worth the trip. It was worth the trip. <laughs> Tony, I only want to order the things that you would be eating in Shenyang on the street, okay? What kind of chars are we looking at? Hot pepper? The chars, we definitely got the lamb. We got to get the squid. Got to get chicken gizzards. You guys eat intestines? I will, I will. I don't love it, but I will. All right, you guys, we have arrived at our barbecue place called Liu Bu. What does that mean? They want the customers to remain here after they come and just come back again. So it's kind of like a good luck name. And then what did she say when she found out you were from Shenyang? People from the from Dongbei are very low, Xiang, right? They, they really care about the relationship and that you guys are from the same region. And said that anything you can think of, we'll just cook it for you. It doesn't have to be on the menu. <laughs> Isn't it in Dongbei you guys call each other Lao Tie? When the relationship is so solid, it's as hard as iron. Oh, Dude, guys. You guys, we gotta start getting into some of this Shao Kao, which is barbecue. This tofu skin is so thin, it's almost like a pasta. Dopey. Tough people, but soft tofu. Mmm, the fire. Wow. It's like peppery pasta in my mouth, bro. It tastes like meat. The flavoring, the cumin. All right, well, let's talk about this real quick. These are rice cakes, and they look like the Korean dupoki. It does. It's basically so, the same thing, but this one is uh, grilled over. So it's a little crispy on the outside with a little cumin, a little salt pepper. Uh -huh. So it's got that kick to it. Let's go. Cumin, cumin rice, rice cake. Mmm. Usually it would be like in a dessert or something. This is a grilled manto. A manto is the white bread. They just slice it up like a Texas toast. Mm. Yeah. The seasoning is on point. Yeah. With the flavoring and the barbecue. This is really Perfect. good, guys. It's really crispy on the outside and super fluffy on the inside. So the waitress came by and I'm not gonna lie, you know, my Chinese is not that good, but she said something like, yo, the auntie made this specially for you guys. Yeah, yeah, she gave us these two simple vegetable dishes. Very they might, style. yeah, very home style. They might not look any, like anything fancy, but I guarantee you the flavor will be there. I'm really excited about this one, this lettuce. I love lettuce, garlic, and ginger. Let's go. They do try to make the vegetables kind of have a meaty umami flavor. Bro, yeah. this is super tasty. I'm not saying it, it doesn't have its oil, but this is really good. It's kind of spicy, super savory, has kind of a kick. You could eat the flavoring with a lot. You put some rice in there and you just can eat, can feed a lot of people. Yo, right. Tony, you said you never had duck tongues before, right? Nope. Go Got for it. it, bro. Mmm, the duck tongue is kind of fire. The duck tongue was actually really good. I think definitely certain cuts of meat is more debatable, but ones that's not up for debate is the yang rou chan. You can't really go wrong with the lamb skewer. Mmm, perfect. This is good. And I know usually a lot of people don't really eat lamb, but with the cumin and the barbecue, it's you can't even taste that, that weird taste that some people complain about, right? This lamb with cumin is like a perfect combination. All right, the skewers are flying in, guys. I have the chicken rack, so it's a bunch of like chicken rib bones. And then this, I believe, are the sheep testicles, which I ordered on purpose because I saw this in YouTube videos about the Dongbei region. This is, how do I say? Sheep? This is lamb kidney. Yeah. Oh, lamb kidney. Yeah, this one. That, that's oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> guys, this was the kidney. I'm gonna go in. Take oh, a we look. We gotta do it. Oh, guys, guys, we gotta, we gotta go do it together. Sheep ah! I know you haven't had this, but this I've is really popular this. in Dongbei, I guess. I guess so. Let's go, guys. Hey, Gambei. Oh my gosh. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. It's tender. I would not say it's fire. It's not bad though. I'm gonna eat this uh, chicken rack, jigu jia, one of my favorite dongbei dishes. Mm. All right, you guys. This is egg and chive. Oh man, I was waiting to get this. Mm. I'm currently chewing on a chicken neck. Yeah, yeah. I know. I said that. And it's bomb. Here we have 
the tofu skins, stir fry with pepper and pork. And I know that this kind of looks like leathery tofu, but actually look at that pork and how it's charred. Mmm. What's your favorite? I gotta go with the traditional yang rou char. Oh, oh man, that wow. was good. You can never go wrong with that. Guys, the duck tongue and the oh, beef wow. tendon were flavors. I gotta give a shout out, and if nobody's gonna shout it out, to the actual garlic. Yeah. This garlic was done better than a lot of spots I've actually had this grilled garlic. Tony, we were kind of talking earlier, aside from food, you were saying that it's possible that sort of the archetypical Dongbei personality helped you adapt to Western society. It definitely helped me. I just went in with the fact that if they like me for me, then that's just what it is, you know? And that's kind of the Dongbei mindset. We don't cater ourselves to, to, to somebody else, you know? We'll play like a clip of this Dongbei song. This Dongbei song, basically saying like, every Dongbei person is like a selfless soldier that helps the community, right? Yeah. Yo, everybody is a selfless soldier. <laughs> Thank God you got a Dongbei friend in your circle. <laughs> to check out the New World Mall. Some of the spots are ran by Dongbei people, if not serving Dongbei food. So hopefully we will find some really good Northeastern dumplings. And the specialty, Tony, that we're gonna get today is fish dumplings. Fish dumplings. I've actually never had that myself, so I'm excited. You might talk to the people and find out that it's actually a very common Dongbei dish that maybe you just didn't have. But you know what? We'll find out, guys. New World Mall. We have arrived at the Dongbei fish dumpling spot. Tony, you said even you are not familiar with this, right? Does it mean the filling is made of fish? Or yeah, we're about to find out. English is Dongbei, right? Oh, what are we gonna be getting today? So usually in the north, we personal personally we eat the chive dumplings and we also eat the sensian dumplings, which is made of pork, shrimp, and scallion. You now doing what? Who is the We're gonna hit up this other dumpling spot. It's the Chinese Korean dumpling place. My guess is that they're most likely from Dongbei, so let's go find out. You're Dongbei, right? The owner is actually from Shenyang as well. Is there another dumpling? What about this sour cabbage? Oh yeah, yeah, we should get that. Let's get that. Sour cabbage, as we know, is a huge thing in Dongbei. It kind of just like typified what people eat out there. Yeah. Right here, we got Korean and Chinese food. They have some different dishes than the Korean Chinese dumplings over there. So, the four is from Dongbei, but they're they're not from Dongbei. Okay, we are at New World Mall, and like we said, in the world NYC, we explore culture through food. Basically, long story short, a lot of people from Dongbei originally are from Shandong. From Dalian to Yantai, there is some shared culture because they're right across the water from each other. I think it's just a boat ride. This kind of represents the transition point between Shandong into Dongbei. Starting off more with the Shandong Dalian dumplings. From These starting. are the uh, Sanxian. So it's got three things in it, pork, shrimp, and cabbage and then pork shrimp and chive so everybody go in for one of them yo i need some of that vinegar bro i don't even care this is how the northerners do i'm gonna pour this vinegar on it are you I, a I, soy sauce i'm or more a, of a soy sauce uh, guy i'm a hybrid i'm a hybrid actually mm. yo the sunshine is a super good dumpling man mm. This has a lot of shrimp and parsley in it too, so it's very fragrant. Sanxian is usually uh, pretty typical of the north because usually you wouldn't put seafood in your dumplings, right? But since we're close to the water, it makes sense. All right, moving on, guys. This is a chive mm. and egg one. I yep. think this one needs a little bit of vinegar, but also some soy sauce. Let's go. Egg, egg and chives. chives. Like, really traditional. This player. is like a Jiu Tai Hoods, just like mm -hmm. in a dumpling form. Wow. Moving on, we've got lamb and carrot. Once you're starting to get into the northern meats here, yeah. the lambs. You know, this is my first time having lamb chopped up and mixed with carrot. Me too. It's pretty juicy, actually, the lamb, because lamb is a very fatty meat. It created almost like a Shaolong Bao soup-like effect within the dumpling. Wow. The carrot kind of takes away the game meat, gaminess of the lamb as Wow, well. I've never had carrot in a dumpling before. Last but not least, guys, this is something I'm super excited about. This is the fish dumpling, ah. more native to Qingdao, Yantai, yeah. and Dalian. I'm about to eat this with no sauce, guys. Fish dumpling. Is this is your first time you get a fish first dumpling? First time, first time. Fluffy fish in the middle, very nice. It could be cod, sea bass, it's pounded up, but not too much like a fish ball. That's very good. Much softer than a fish ball. Coming in to compete with the Shandong style dumplings, we actually have a very, very Dongbei style of eating dumplings here. It's a little bit thicker, even more wheat, and look, this dip right here that they give you, it almost has some of those, like, I wanna say Korean chili pepper flakes in oh, there. Oh, it looks like the thing you dip the uh, seafood pancake yeah. in, the hamel yeah. patch on, right? Sour, Sour cabbage, cabbage dumplings. dumplings. Way more sour. 
between the sauce and the filling, it just hits Very you. Very crunchy yeah. as well. Mm. No, was, I like it. It's not too, too sour. Is this the dumpling of them all that's just hitting you in your soul right now? It's it definitely you. is. Definitely. It's not in the sun scene for sure. It's sour back. cabbage is so popular in Shayana. Like where I used to live, every single apartment window is just filled with jars of cabbage. Wait, wait, so why, why would the apartment windows be filled with cabbages? Because I think that the cabbage needs exposure to the sun, so it's best to put it near the window. Also, maybe it's just there's no no room in, in, in the house, right? You know? That's a good point. Yeah. I don't want to go against the Yentai dumplings, but I don't know. That one was kicking with the most flavor easily. Ah, I can't say. Andrew? The lamb? I like the fish dumpling. Yeah. I like the fish dumpling a lot, but they were actually all very good. They're all winners, guys. <laughs> all brothers. Hey, wait, wait, wait. All, wait, wait. all, all brothers. All, all, all brothers. All Lao Tears. Last two things. We have our more like Korean style dishes. Tony, is this something you ate growing up in Shenyang? Do you ever eat this? I don't personally because I don't really like a cold noodle, but my parents actually met eating this. So it's super traditional your, and it definitely hits home when I see this dish. So your parents met over eating long mian, yeah. The Korean long yang. mian. All right. I'm going to try one of these. All right, give me one, Andrew. You got three of them. Uh, what would you order again? I can't even tell what one meat they are. One is chicken gizzard, one is lamb, and the other one is squid head. All right. Yeah, definitely more saucy than usual. It has a high kick at the end too. Mm. I believe this is more of how the Korean Chinese would do their chuar. It's actually a lot more red. It might even have a slight gochujang flavor on it. Yembian is right across the border from North Korea. Some of those cities in that area are like majority Korean. Try these noodles. Yo, Tony, what you should try it. That's what your parents should met. I try over. it. Should I try it? Maybe, maybe if you start eating this, some uh, Dongbei girl is gonna come around <laughs> and be like, hey, not bad. Very refreshing. You know, cleanses my palate for some more dumplings. All right, you guys, that does it for the Dongbei episode of the World N1. When we went to that little barbecue spot, Liu Bu, it really warmed me to see that the Dongbei restaurants that do remain still have the characteristics of Dongbei, you know? It was very gummer jammer. Yeah. Very yeah, gummer jammer, which is like, it's just yeah. homie. They were so warm and joking around with each other. I almost thought I was a Dongbei person for a second. I really didn't expect to meet people who really do show the blending and the diversity of cultures up there, especially in that part, in the far places that, you know, where the countries border each other, there is a significant amount of blending up there, which makes it unique. The different groups of people learning to get along with each other, but still being proud of being from Dongbei, might also be one portion of why they're so extroverted. It's weird to think that a stereotype of a region in China is being extroverted, right? If you guys get the chance to try Dongbei food, even if you're not Asian, you should check it out. Very, very underrated food. In the comments down below, let us know what your favorite Northeastern Chinese Dongbei dish is. Um, also, let us know if there's another cuisine that we should cover out in New York City on the world and why. Yes, we are making it out to Flushing. Who knows if it's a really good restaurant, we might even make it out farther. So let us know in the comments down below, guys. Big shout out to Tony Bai. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we out. Peace. I'm always blown away by how much Flushing actually feels like China. I posted a story just now and probably 20 people asked me if I was in China. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, hey, yeah. you, you, you are you out of quarantine? You left for break? <laughs>